All right, everyone. Uh, I think we'll uh, we'll get started here. Um, uh, others can join, or we can view this later on. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, just a quick kind of a webinar here to talk a little bit about 11.2. Uh, I want to give a little background of um, of what's coming, what's expected, uh, the direction we're going, and uh, what we've seen thus far. Um, the presentation will be by myself, Josh Kincaid. A uh, little bit of background on me. I'm a and Eric will be presenting here today, uh, looking at um, my background is I'm the consolidation practice lead here at eCapital Advisors. I've been in the consolidation space for about 20 years, working with a number of different softwares. I've been at eCapital e -Capital for about 15. Um, Eric, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Josh. So my name is Eric Milbrandt. I am responsible for day-to-day -day project delivery on the EPM side of the house here at eCapital. I've been in finance and technology roles for over a decade now, and the last seven years of which have been at eCapital. So if I haven't met you, I look forward to hopefully working with you someday. Great. Uh, let's get into a uh, presentation here. I know that we're we're already pinched for time. Um, talk a little bit about eCapital, but really get into the roadmap, where 11.2 is at, uh, what's when support's ending, what's no longer available, what's new. Um, Kind of rushing through this a little bit. Um, who we are, uh, most of you on the phone, we already know. Uh, we've had experience with you, but we're a, we're a business partner that leverages technologies to drive business solutions. So when we uh, we work with with organizations, all the way from advisory services, where we start uh, start having conversations about process and changing some of those processes to hardcore development of the of the specific tools and uh, spe specific te technologies that we're partnered with. Um, we've been around, we have 80 plus employees, most of which are our are, uh, are consultants. Uh, we have teams based in, I think, around 16 states now, actually, uh, growing quickly. We've had 300 uh, plus global customers growing every, growing every year. In the last, uh, we've been around just about 20 years. We've been around since 2001. Um, our, our areas of focus are really, have a number of different them, are really performance management and business analytics within a number of different technologies, uh, but also driving some of those other items around uh, knowledge, knowledge base, so eCapital University, uh, creating roadmaps, hosting services, and managed services. Um, you can look at the, uh, later on when we download this, you can look, take a look at the, uh, the NASCAR slide and the different folks we've worked with. So really what we're focused on here today is uh, talking about where to now, right? So as we look at where we're at uh, within the 11.1.x release, uh, there's a couple different directions you can go here. Uh, the intent of this one is really to focus on the bottom arrow, uh, which is the 11.1.2.4, it's the on-prem. But we will talk a little bit about the EPM cloud direction in as much as there's been some major kind of new developments and how they're licensing and how that's coming out uh, recently over the last uh, last quarter of last year and want to make sure people are informed on that and have an understanding of that but as anything uh, as you get into making some of these decisions and looking at this road mapping uh, it's important to uh, talk to a partner talk to us to say okay how does our, our your specific implementation the way you're using your environment affect either of these directions as we as we uh, as you go forward and overall like I said I'm going to jump into the cloud component just for a few minutes uh, just to let you know some of the major changes so the big change here is as you can see on this slide is really taking uh, taking multiple SKUs and creating two SKUs and what I mean by that is we were licensing these P, these uh, components, the cloud components, separately uh, up until uh, several months ago, and now it's licensed together. So if we talk PBCS, EPSAS, FCCS, ARCS, TRCS, all those different components were licensed separately. They're now part of two different versions. So it's either the EPM Cloud Standard or the EPM Cloud Enterprise. And there's a number of granular differences to these, but in the end, the big difference here is the some of the different um, the, the different business processes that are included. So if we look at the cloud standard, uh, we have planning, we have uh, planning forecasting, we have financial close and consolidation. So FCCS, we have ARCS, which is the account reconciliation. You also have narrative reporting. 
And you can see on the uh, cloud enterprise uh, side of the house, we get a couple additional things around profitability and cost management, tax reporting, and then the uh, the uh, DRM, the cloud component of DRM, which is the data management here. Um, like I said, we have some more granularity here. We're not focused on that, but I want to include this just so that as you're looking at these uh, this presentation later on, you have a little bit more granularity and understanding of what's included with with each of those offerings. So big change for what's in the cloud. Now on to uh, what we're really focused here, right? So the 11.2 release. So the current release uh, 11.2 expect expectations here. It was scheduled for December. It was released uh, on or about December 20th. I think it was a little bit after that. Uh, the expectation here is a, it's a technical upgrade, which meaning it's out of place install, right? So it's not a patch of what you currently have. We'll need a new environment to install brand new. A couple of the key things we're really looking to do within this 11.2 release is um, uplift to the to be uh, on the same level as the Fusion middleware, the 12G, um, as a kind of a sub bullet there. The S space is actually going to use the 11.2.4 uh, rep repository simplification. So our our current uh, FR our workspace repository simplifying some of that. Big one here that we've seen over the last number of years is really looking at that third party certifications, right? So what uh, what servers, which uh, databases, which browsers, some of the other Java and other components to get that up to uh, up to speed or up to um, up to the current releases within each of those areas, um, and then really the the focus here in what's 11, 11 2 is really going to change the way this works a little bit, which is really more focused on continuous innovation, meaning that there's not going to be further major releases where you'll have to do an upgrade to get to that release. The concept here is more of a patch style release to be able to leverage those enhancements as we go forward, as those new enhancements uh, are released over time. If we look at um, some of the new planned enhancements or features there, um, within HFM, uh, there's some automated consolidations. Uh, so we're able to do, we have more flexibility as far as how those consolidations are working. Uh, there's a native metadata editor, uh, and you'll that'll make a little bit more sense as we get into some of the discontinued, the uh, EPM, the whole suite EPM discontinued options. Um, also, there's uh, performance, imp uh, performance improvements and some Linux support. Eric, you want to jump into the next set? Sure. So getting into some of the planning specific enhancements coming in 11.2, a lot of these are things that are going to be brought down to the on-prem instances that have kind of been around in the cloud for a while, such as the valid intersections, the smart push, moving data between cubes, um, extended attribute support. So that's, you know, different ways to use attributes for ad hoc reporting and on the forms, as well as some upgrades and enhancements to the dimension editor smart view extension. Also for DRM, there will now be batch scripts um, trying to kind of ease what pain may come folks way as they begin to replace EPMA um, and some different DRG approval experience changes as well as a new SFTP connection. Um, big one here, and, and this can have material impact as we as we start to look at, uh, as people start to look to 11.2 and when they want to upgrade is there are some discontinued features here, right? So some of them are used more often than others, um, but to get into them to understand this can have significant impact because if we're if it's used today, obviously we need to figure out a new process um, that would be available for that. So for the most part on the HFM side, the big one here is gonna be the EAL, which is the S-Space Analytics link. Uh, it was that direct connection between HFM and S-Space. That's being discontinued. Uh, there are some different paths to uh, execute that, especially around the data management, the FDM components. So there are other ways of doing that 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 have been uh, have been used and created over the last few releases. Um, that may we you may just not have changed the way you're doing that yet. Um, the other one here that we don't see used very much, I think I've only seen it a couple times in the last 15 years, is the Hyperion BI. Um, Right now, we're seeing there's not a direct uh, assumption of those duties right now, but like I said, we don't really see Hyperion BI used very much. 
Eric, do you want to cover the uh, Hyperion planning? And features being discontinued on the planning side of the house, what we're really seeing here is kind of a, a decommissioning, if you will, of the on-prem pre-built module philosophy in a way. And so things like HF or HSF, excuse me, crystal ball, the simplified user interface, some of these other pre-built modules such as workforce, CapEx, and, and project planning are all being discontinued from on-prem because they are now kind of shifted to those cloud modules for those of you that have experience experience or, or seeing what is available in the cloud suite, those are offered as pre-built modules. And so that's where they will be going forward, not on-prem. So kind of a big shift there. I know a lot of folks do go custom plan type for those things, but something definitely to know that not everyone's aware of. Also offline planning disclosure management are being decommissioned. And then that EPM mobile app that's available in the iOS and Android app store is also being discontinued for 11.2. Um, one other thing that's a, a big kind of ticket item as far as decommissioning is that in 11.2 EPMA is being sunset. And so it will not be available in 11.2 and beyond as a, you know, metadata management or that foundational component that some of us are using. And so basically folks that have EPMA will be offered a limited use DRM license. What that actually will give folks is five named users to kind of manage their, their metadata through DRM going forward, coming off of EPMA. There will hopefully be some good migration kits and tools that will help. And of course, you know, Oracle will offer upgrades to full use DRM licenses there as well. Uh, like I said before, we just wanna make sure to, to call this out for those folks on S-Space that, that do leverage EAL. Uh, EAL is being discontinued. Uh, there are there are probably I would say different ways of doing it. Some would say better, but uh, the primary primary kind of process that will be inherited here will be around the FDM EE and some of the uh, intra EPM uh, data movements uh, within that tool. So from an overall on premise recap here, um, eleven one two four. <clears throat> and this has changed over the last uh, five to six months. Uh, 11124 is now being on premier support through the end of 2021. Um, as of about the middle of last year, 21 was an option to do enhanced uh, the enhanced support, but right now, or I'm sorry, extended support. But as of right now, we have premier support through the end of 2021. Extended support is no longer available. So at the end of 2021, it will go out of premier support. Um, 11.2 was released here in December. Uh, that's like we talked about before, there's some of the other things that we're looking to go around the uh, uplift uh, Fusion middleware, uh, the repository simplification. But what we've been hearing as of right now is the on-prem will be supported with enhanced, some level of enhancements through at least 2030, right? So. Could this change could it be extended? Sure, it could right. But as of right now, what we're seeing, what we're hearing, and we're seeing from Oracle is that this is going to be supported through at least 2030. One thing we did want to talk a little bit about, um, just to make sure kind of everybody understands, is from a premier support, extended support, sustaining support, right? So there's three different levels of support, uh, and you can look at these in 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 more detail. But essentially. Premier support is what we're going to have updates to on an ongoing basis, right? So if we need another, a different third party uh, certification, any of that continued development, that's really in the premier support field. Once you get to sustaining support, it is really only what's already been developed for that. So once we, once we go past December 2021, anything, any new items coming up will be developed in the, in this 11.2 and won't be in 11.124. Um, and like I said, extended support has been discontinued. Um, it's it's not available for this product at, for I'm sorry for 1112x really. There is some so we've talked about uh, really focused on primarily on HFM uh, some of the planning applications. Um, S space itself has some uh, a little bit different approach to what we're seeing uh, from a go forward basis. Thanks, Josh. And now to get into kind of a, a year or so 
down the road is what we're being told right now um, for SBase 19C. Um, that's really what the cloud is moving to sooner than later. And basically it's just the next version of SBase being moved within the Oracle database tool set. Um, the idea is that there will be parity between the cloud and on-prem once this launches for 11.2 long-term. And a lot of things with this are going to change in the way that um, not only SBase is used, but also smart view, narrative reporting, and analytics as well. One of the, the big things, and this is a nice graphic that kind of shows that, is that again, 11.2 is launching with an SBase release that's very similar to what folks are on for 11.124 right now. Um, but what's going to happen sooner than later, we're being told is in the cloud, OACS base is going to be effectively discontinued for those that are not currently on it and new S base cloud users will be then getting onto this new 19C instance. This then this instance will then launch on prem as either a standalone or an upgradable patchable S base within your 11.2 instance and will kind of change the way that licensing and really everything from licensing to the way users and admins interact with the tool. Some of those things high level are again that the the cloud is planned for h1 or half one this year and the next 12 months probably a year from now is on-prem one of the big ones for me is that eas is more or less going to be sunset as current direction as part of that and so this will then transition to some sort of web ui um, workspace in combination with enhanced kind of integrated development tools within excel um, and kind of that web UI cube designer. Things should be much more nimble on the fly for cube development and, and really might be fully designable within an Excel add and kind of like what we've seen with the planning dimension editor. There will be enhanced REST API support as well as um, different support for non Unicode will be dropped. So quite a lot of changes there. Um, there are lots of talk around being able to, you know, buy on-prem licenses and bring them to the cloud and, and a lot of different models that those are moving towards, but that is still, I think, something that not a lot of us have a ton of experience with as 19C is really kind of in its infancy. So as we circle back to the overall 11.2 from uh, S-Space here, um, we have 11.2 and we're, as of right now, we've been starting the testing on that initial release of 11.2 that came out in December. Um, there are some specific, um, specific requirements or specific um, definitions of what's been released in this initial release uh, that will be updated over time. So obviously some of these things are based off of strictly this December release and what we're going to see in the future should extend. So as of December, the 11.2 release currently supports only Windows 2019. Um, we do look that we do expect that to change and, and to broaden out. Uh, from a database perspective, it's SQL 2016 SB2 and or, or, Oracle 11G and 12. Um, 11 G and 12. There's a couple other unique limitations that we obviously expect to be refined at, upon these further uh, patch set release. Uh, right now, uh, after the initial install, you cannot alter the system resources or database configurations, right? So that's a, that's a pretty major item uh, within the current set. Um, also, the Windows 2000 server or Windows 10 are for client users, uh, sorry, client tools only. Um, also, you must migrate from 11.124. We don't necessarily see that last one changing. The concept here is that you are on 11.124 right now, and then you would migrate to 11.2. Um, as we talk to our different clients, there, there are different paths that we can take if you're not on 11.124 right now, but just from an overall standpoint, uh, that's, that's what we're seeing. Uh, what we have done is we have, we have it stood up. We have been testing some of the functionality. Um, one major thing to know is some of those enhancements that we've talked about, this initial release was not intended to release all those enha enhancements. It was more uh, initial release to get the environment stood up uh, without any of uh, the enhancements. 
Um, but one of the things we've noticed or one of the things that hadn't been necessarily noted specifically is within HFM, the copy app does not exist as of right now. Um, will that change? It might change, right? In 11124, uh, it didn't exist. And then there was uh, some pushback from the client community and they brought it back. So it'll be interesting to see uh, some of those things as well. And one other thing I want to mention too is that <clears throat> with this uplift to the Fusion Middleware 12G release, that kind of brings a whole host of you know modernization to the web logic and other backend components. Uh, two of the big ones people will probably want to know about are Java has now been updated to 8 or 1.8 and now supports a higher level. The, the applications now support a higher level of SSL security. So IT departments may be happy to hear those things. So I want to make sure we mention them. Sure. Thanks, Eric. So what, what do we do next, right? So uh, the big things here as, we're, as we've been talking to folks as, and what we're recommending is really evaluating the new and discontinued functionality. Most of that new functionality is not there uh, from, a, from a functional standpoint. And there will be releases upcoming here that will get the uh, architecture to that new uh, release component. Um, review, the, review the supported uh, environment, right? So how long are you on support for? Once again, December 2021. And really develop that roadmap, right? So is there any pre-work for the migration? You know, and a big one here would be obviously around discontinued items, uh, discontinued functionality. And then the other, uh, another big one is really estimated time to that live system. It's pretty, pretty obvious, but really looking at based off of December 2021, if you need parallels, if you need uh, other items, sign off by auditors, any of those migration specific things that need to happen, looking at when those need to happen by so that we can, you know, back, essentially back into when you need to start that migration process. Um, for those other folks that are maybe even a little more open to than that, it's really also looking at that cloud readiness. So, is there a corporate is there a corporate direction uh, from a cloud perspective? Is that the direction that each people uh, your organization is going? Um, that then really makes it important to look at the the functionality and usage, right? So, how many applications do you have? How are you using those applications? Who are those users? It really gets into a fairly granular conversation around. How do we migrate? How do we change as effectively as possible? Um, and you can see there's there's a few other items down there below or around TCO. Uh, but what we've had is quite a few conversations with folks to get uh, conversations and actual um, um, actual uh, advisory services uh, to be able to understand some of these directions as we dive in deeper into that. Um, and that's one of the things we talk about here is some of the technology assessments and being able to deliver deliver back to you what's what is the roadmap, what's the best direction to go, are there any gotchas um, based off the way you use it today, how will cloud how does cloud integrate, how does it uh, how does on prem, and to look long term what is what makes the most sense for your organization. Eric, do you have anything to add before we open it up to Q and A? No, I would just say again, thanks for joining us. You know, we know every situation is different and we look forward to, you know, working through these problems as a team in the coming months. So I realize we've run a little bit long here. I, we do want to take a chance here to uh, open this up um, to uh, questions, uh, we're willing to stay on here for whatever period of time. Uh, some things we, we might not know. Uh, we haven't done a lot of performance testing yet. Uh, we will be getting to that, but we'd be happy to answer questions. Uh, one second while we get that uh, opened up. There we go, we've got one. Send it over to you right now. Um, Christopher uh, asks, I probably missed it, but what's the replacement for HFM app copy? Right now, uh, the, 
the replacement as it's seen right now is an LCM process. Um, we saw that in 11124, that LCM process wasn't really prime time and ready to go. Um, as we start to test, uh, that'll be one of our major areas that we're gonna be testing, which is how does that LCM process, does it fully function as the copy app does, or will there be pushback from the, uh, the client community to try to bring that uh, HFM copy app back? So right now it's the intent uh, will be LCM, uh, understanding that historically that hasn't been a great solution. Matt asks, what happens after December 2021 if you decide to do nothing? Uh, you'll switch into sustaining support. Uh, that sustaining support really, you'll be able to implement or install any patches or anything from the previous release that had been created before 2021. Um, one of the other things that it's kind of obvious, but as long as you're paying your, your maintenance fees, you're available, you're, you have the ability to upgrade and download and install the new software, but um, it's more, for the most part, it's more your risk assessment uh, or, or risk, whether you're willing to accept the risk of not being fully supported if a new problem came up, right? So we still have folks that are on very old versions. You know, there's some people still on enterprise, which was done being supported more than 10 years ago. It's just what risk you're willing to take. So if there's a problem with your server or there's a new uh, a new bug that comes out or that your organization um, goes to a new version of the new database version, those tend to be your biggest risks there. Another question is if we've heard any timeline for EPMA to DRM conversion scripts, the latest I have heard is that there will be a white paper and tools published. I've not heard a timeline, but we can definitely try and circle back on that one. Another one from Guy. On page 25, you reference a Windows 2019 environment only, but we can migrate from 11.2 on Linux servers that reside within AWS cloud. Is this correct? Uh, as of right now, uh, Windows 2019 is the only thing that's supported. Linux Linux is not supported as of right now. Clearly, that's one of the items they outlined as what's coming up. So we would expect that over the next several months that they will be extended that, extending those, that, um, extending how many of those, uh, which softwares are supported from that perspective. So. Right now, it's just Windows 2019, but we expect within the next several months that they'll be expanding that set. We got a question from Phil. He says, it feels like Oracle is pushing more and more towards cloud. What should be considerations to upgrade to 11.2 versus moving to EPM cloud? Sure, uh, that's a great question. I think that uh, we won't be able to answer that in, in uh, several sentences, but really what it comes down to is um, the way you're using your applications and which applications you have. So there's the, the big difference, uh, I shouldn't say the big difference, one of the major drivers there is, are you, uh, do you use HFM, do you use SBase, do you use planning? Uh, within each of those, how many applications do you have within those? Um, really what we've seen in the past and how we've worked uh, worked out some of these conversations is really to sit down and look at, uh, identify and um, identify your current environment, how are you using it, and what the cloud component provides versus the on-prem. Um, I think from a continuous innovation standpoint, we tend to see more enhancements to, and this is my opinion, but we tend to see more enhancements to the consolidations. And uh, I'm sorry, we tend to see tend to see more enhancements to the planning and forecasting side of the house as opposed to the consolidation, um, which is HFM, FCCS. But we kind of have to have a more granular, detailed uh, conversation, um, which obviously we'd be happy to have uh, about how you're using the system and are there limitations or drawbacks. I shouldn't say limitations. Are there different ways you need to change your process to fit within that cloud solution? I would echo that. I think 
especially on the planning side, the 11.2 kind of edict is going to be that the features will be very similar. How similar remains to be seen with the frequency of, of patch scheduling and updates and things like that. I think the number one consideration is footprint size and what is the cost to go from an on-prem to a cloud solution given the number of applications and models an organization is running. And I also think the, the HFM FCCS features are a little bit different you know, than the planning to PBCS features. Sure. All right, we got one last question from Christopher. He says, have you heard any timeline for the EPMA to we DRM? That. We got that one yeah. already? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Um, clearly, there's, you know, there's, we've probably only op opened up Pandora's box here, right? I mean, I think that from that perspective, we can have lots, lots of long, in-depth conversations. But I think what we'll do for today is cut this off here. But that said, I want to make sure that everyone uh, will get this out as a follow-up to uh, this presentation, which is get out our email addresses and please feel free to get in contact with us. Uh, would love to answer more questions via either via email or or uh, on the phone or in person. Um, depending on the, what the question is, it might be easier to go one route or the other, but absolutely feel free to get a hold of us uh, via our emails that we'll send out here, um, or you can contact us, give us a call either way. Uh, we'll send that out here shortly. Uh, look for on the website shortly to have the, uh, the recording of this presentation, but also the ability to download this presentation as we move forward. Uh, I thank you for your time. Sorry about some of the uh, techno technological uh, challenges we have here, uh, but like I said, uh, love to answer those questions, 11-2, and it's important for everyone to spend the time to kind of develop that roadmap as we approach, uh, I know it feels like a long ways up, but as we approach the end of 2021, uh, and and how that support changes. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.